So in today's lesson, we're going to tackle a concept that's uh, commonly used in home hemo patients, and that's the flow fraction. Now, the flow fraction is a very simple mathematical formula, but what we want to do in today's lesson is not necessarily calculate the formula and use it. We want to understand what the flow fraction is and how we can best use it uh, in home hemo patients. So to do that, let's make a little table here and go through some of the differences between a home hemo patient and an in-center patient because there are a tremendous number of differences that will impact how you write a prescription for these patients, home hemo patients. The first uh, is going to be the frequency on dialysis. Uh, let's write that like this. In-center patients usually come three times a week home hemo patients can do anywhere between five or six times a week and sometimes even seven every day a week. So that's the first difference. Uh, the second difference is your KT over V per treatment session. For in-center patients based on the hemo study it's about 1.2 to 1.4 but for home hemo patients there aren't any studies good enough to tell you what's the optimal KT over V per session. We've extrapolated the optimal KT over V from the peritoneal dialysis world. So for now I'm going to write down the per session is about 0 0.42 and we can explore, go into that a little further in the next lesson. Then we've got dialysate volume. This is very different. The in-center hemo patient can be exposed to, to about 120 liters of volume per session, whereas the home hemo patient gets exposed to much less, about 20 liters. And the main reason for this is because of space. The in-center patient is in a location where an quote infinite amount of dialysate volume can be stored and therefore you can prescribe as much dialysate volume as you need to achieve this KT over V. That's not the case for the home hemo patient. The home hemo patient is limited uh, by their home so they cannot have as much dialysate volume stored in their house. And that plays right into the time on dialysis. The time on dialysis is prescribed by the physician here. We choose how much time a patient should be on dialysis in the center. And as a result of that, our dialysis machine will determine how much dialysate volume is required to achieve a KT over V of 1.4. In the hemodialysis world, we don't choose the time because we have to choose the dialysate volume. We have to determine how much volume can a patient hold in their home and therefore use per session and then determine how much time will it take to use up that dialysate volume to get a KT over V of, one, of 0 0.42. So in other words, time in the in-center hemo world is independent. It's an independent variable. In the home hemo world, it's a dependent variable. And it's dependent primarily on the dialysate volume. So let's look at a graph to help us explain this uh, a bit further. And I want you to keep these three points in mind while we're looking at this graph. Um, many of you have already seen this graph. It's a common graph. Uh, it's the ratio of dialysate flow rate or total dialysate volume to clearance of a substance. We'll choose urea. And the graph looks generally something like this. This graph tells you that at a certain point beyond which, certain point of the dialysate flow rate, uh, you will receive or achieve no greater clearance in urea for every increment in your dialysate volume. It shows also that at a certain point on the graph you'll get optimal urea clearance rate for a given range of dialysate flow rate. That's this area generally that I'm highlighting right here. All right, now let's talk about the home hemo patient and the in-center patient as they relate to this graph. In the in-center patient, we are prescribing the time because time 
is one of the limiting factors. We have to move patients through the center, so we cannot keep them on dialysis quote, forever. So we usually prescribe the time. It's physician prescribed. And we tell our dialysate machine, these are the things that we want to achieve. We want to achieve a time. We want to achieve a certain KT over V. And we will tell you what the blood flow should be based on the patient's comorbid conditions. For example, say they're hypotensive or they have a significant amount of steel. We decide the time, the KT over V, and the blood flow. We tell the machine, you figure out how much dialysate flow is required so that all of these three parameters can be met. That's not what happens in the home hemo patient. In the home hemo patient, we tell them what KT, we tell the machine what KT or V we want. We also tell them what blood flow we want for the same reasons that we would do that for an in-center patient. And we tell them what dialysate flow we want because we're limited by how much dialysate volume a patient can store in their home. And the machine will then tell us how much time it'll take per session. And we hope that we can get a dialysate flow rate such that we get the most amount of urea clearance, in other words, the best KT over V, because that will give us the least amount of time on the dialysis machine. And to do all that, we will look at your, our flow fraction. So let's do that now. We're going to get rid of this area here. And we're going to look at the flow fraction in more detail. Okay, so the flow fraction is a very simple formula. Let's draw a line right there. It's a very uh, straightforward formula. It's basically, and we're going to denote it as FF, the ratio of the dialysate flow over the ratio of the blood flow. What we want in a home hemo patient is a flow fraction of about 30 to 35 percent. The reason for this number is because it turns out that when you get a flow fraction, in other words, a ratio of dialysate flow to blood flow that's 30 to 35 percent, you get about a 92 percent dialysate saturation of urea. In other words, what you're getting uh, is a very high clearance of urea for the least amount of dialysate flow. So this is something that is prescribed by the physician. And so let's look at a typical home hemo prescription. Uh, we're going to tell the machine that we want a certain KT over V. So we are going to tell them what this is. And we know that we're going to solve for this equation. Uh, and this is how we do that. The volume of distribution stays the same. That doesn't change. We get that from the patient's uh, body weight. The clearance is going to be the ratio of urea and the dialysate versus the plasma times the drain volume. times time. So let's take this equation and let's look at it a little further. So we've got a KT over V. It's going to equal, excuse me, let me write this again. There we go. A dialysate concentration over the plasma concentration times the drain volume times time divided by the volume of distribution. We know what this is, the volume of distribution, so that doesn't change. We tell the machine what we want here, that's fine. Let's look at this entity right here. This entity is actually related to this ratio, which happens to be the flow fraction, which we prescribe. So we have this, it's the flow fraction. Kt over V equals your flow fraction, your volume of distribution, 
we've got time in there and now we need your drain volume. Well your drain volume is basically your Dallas A flow rate times time. You could have some UF in here as well but for the purposes of uh, explanation we're going to assume our patient's getting no UF. So you just take the Dallas A flow rate times the time, add any UF that you've prescribed, Multiply by your flow fraction, divide by your volume distribution, you'll get your KT over V for home hemo patient. You prescribe this, you prescribe this, this is pretty much standard. This is dependent on your flow fraction, so in essence you've prescribed this, and this is the variable that will change. And so what you normal what you get is something like this. 0 0.42 time equals 0 0.3, that's a 30% flow fraction. Do dial say flow times time divided by your volume of distribution. Your dial say flow rate is actually can be rewritten because their flow fraction is the ratio of your dial say flow rate and your blood flow rate, so it's really just your blood flow times your flow fraction times time divided by the volume of distribution. So what we're going to do in the next lesson is we're going to take the same home hemo concepts which I showed you in the prior two slides. That is that time is a dependent variable and we're going to use the flow fraction, the Dallas A flow rate, the KT over V, and we're going to look at why this particular concept, this way of writing a dialysis prescription is not a proper way to do an in-center hemodialysis prescription.